As soon as I get back in the Oval Office, I'll also immediately end the war on Christians. I don't know if you feel it. You have a war. There's a war. Under crooked Joe Biden, Christians and Americans of faith are being persecuted, and government has been weaponized against religion like never before, and also presidents like never before. Here I am. I always say Al Capone was treated better than I was treated. Scarface, Al Capone, he was a tough one. Biden and his corrupt Department of Injustice have sent SWAT teams to arrest pro-life activists. They've targeted conservative parents at school board meetings who don't want filth taught to their children. It's filth. What they're teaching in schools is filth and nonsense, and we can't let that happen. But they're being targeted, and now the communists, Marxists, and fascists are going hard after Catholics, even plotting to send spies into Catholic churches. It's all come out, just like in the Soviet Union from days gone by. Now, think of it. If you're Catholic, why would you vote for a Democrat? What they're doing to Catholics. I don't know what's going on with the Catholics, but they're really being persecuted. Why would you vote for Biden, and why would you vote for a Democrat? A new report from the House Judiciary Committee proves that the Biden FBI actually targeted Catholics as potential domestic terrorists. Do you believe this? And, you know, uh, evangelicals will not be far behind, because when that starts, it starts happening on a very major scale. When I'm back in the White House, never again will your government be used to target Christians and other religious believers. Upon taking office, I will create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias to be led by a fully reformed Department of Justice that's fair and equitable. Its mission will be to investigate all forms of illegal discrimination, harassment, and persecution against Christians in America. They are going after Christians in America. Who's, who's can believe all this stuff? It's not believable, is it? But it is fact. It's just like so many of the other things when I stand up and I say that we will stop, and I've said it, we will stop men from participating in women's sports. I mean, the whole thing that you have. No, but things that you, you say, that you say that you can't believe you're up here and, uh, and saying it. We, will, we are for parental rights. You have to say that. No, no, think of it. We are for parental rights. Who believes that? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, who would ever have to say a thing like that? We're for parental rights. Of course, we're for parental rights. But the Democrats aren't. They're fascists. They're not. They want school boards. They want people to take your children and do things with your children that are not even speakable. Americans of faith are not a threat to our country. Americans of faith are the soul of our country, and they have been from the beginning. I will defend religion, and I will defend in God we trust. We, we will defend in God we trust, which is... And you know that very important phrase is under siege. You do know that, right? We will defend it 100 percent. When Joe Biden lit the national Christmas tree earlier this month, he completely failed to even mention the birth of Jesus Christ, which is hard to do if you're celebrating Christmas, right? He didn't mention Jesus Christ in his remarks. Not for three years he hasn't mentioned that and barely mentioned God. When I was president, we brought back the beautiful phrase, Merry Christmas. And I said I'd do that. I'm very proud of that, actually, because, as I said at the beginning, that was really under siege. And when I lit the Christmas tree each year, it was my honor to publicly celebrate the true source of uh, Christmas joy, which is Jesus Christ. As president, I kept every promise I made to Christians and more, and I think everybody in this room understands that very well. That's pretty well documented. In our first four years, we appointed nearly 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. I stood up for religious liberty at home and all around the world. I protected innocent life, and I defended the Judeo-Christian values of our nation's founding. I proudly recognize Israel's eternal capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem, which is a big thing. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And, you know, they were looking to get that for 72 years. 
They'd fly in, they'd fly out, they'd fly in, they'd fly, every year they'd fly in, they'd discuss it, they'd fly out. And I got it done in about 12 minutes. We got it done very quickly. And with the historic Abraham Accords, I even made peace in the Middle East. Unfortunately, they haven't taken it any further. It should have been taken. We could have had everybody signed up. It's no wonder crooked Joe Biden and the far-left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary. They are willing to violate the U.S. constitutions at levels never seen before in order to win this election. Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. It's a threat.